welcome back. Stasa 23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And uh, today I got, uh, I picked up a knife over the weekend from Blade HQ. And first off, when y'all get a, a knife from Blade HQ, ask them for a, a knife picture in the description box because I always love to see it. I uh, just never remember to show it. There you go. It's awesome. Definitely put a smile on my face. And the knife that I picked up is a budget offering that I was trying to, I wanted to check out for you guys so I could try to find, I always like to try to find budget offerings to bring to my, my viewers, good quality ones. And today's knife is uh, made by Stat Gear, and it's called the Aussis. This is the box it comes in, and Aussis, ver it's a Latin verb, means to dare, have courage to go, have courage to do. Act boldly, venture, and risk. Intend, be prepared. And there's some stats, some pause and read. Made in China. There you go. And it also has like the nice foam cut out. So this knife uh, came in right at $50 at Blade HQ, like I said. And I would say it's geared to, uh, you know, uh, to be in a hard use work knife. But we'll talk about some things why I'm not too sure if it would be the best for that in my eyes. So what do we have here? We have just your classic drop point blade, um, flat saber ground blade. You have your stat gear logo on this side and your steel designation, which is D2 tool steel on this side. Uh, you have two oversized thumb studs on both sides. So you can use it left or right handed. Oh, I just slipped. That was my bad. And you can do it left handed as well. There you go. Um, then coming back, you have basically a square design. You know, no nonsense. Um, you have some nice brown canvas micarta. And I'm going to be honest, that's what really drew me to this knife and the price tag. I love me some micarta. I'm definitely a sucker for micarta. Just love the tactile feeling of it when it's when it's dry or wet. It always gives a good grip. Uh, going in the hardware, just standard hardware. Uh, you have a stainless steel liner lock. You have a stainless steel bent deep carry pocket clip that is tip up left or right hand carry. Um, this knife has, oop, I keep doing that, has a nice snappy action and, uh, mainly because it's riding on ball bearings, which you don't see that often with the thumb stud knife. And, uh, that was another reason why I want to check it out. You also have a, a lanyard hole built into the, um, stainless backspacer and, that's pretty much my overall impressions of uh, what I saw firsthand whenever I got it. The ergos on it, it's uh, kind of a blocky knife. It's not uncomfortable, but it's not the most ergonomic. Um, this area right here is left a little, little sharp. We got some 90 degree edges right there. And whenever I'm squeezing, that right there is kind of digging into my palm. But other than that, I did some... I did some nice wood carving and stuff, and it was manageable. It wasn't terrible. You do have that deep chawl right there, which kind of makes it thin right there. And then you have some points right there that aren't softened as good as they could have been. You do have some chamfers going on all the way around the scales. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, there you go. You can see the chamfering. It goes on all the way around, and then they did the cutout so you can get your lanyard on there. Uh, so let's talk about some of the gripes that I've seen right offhand. Um, first off, it came super sharp. And after cutting, breaking down two boxes, and uh, I cut up some, some just nylon rope, nothing crazy, and a little bit of this seat belt type banding, not super, super thick, but you know, I, I like doing that. And, after that, I tested the sharpness. Let's see if I can get a piece of paper. I tested the sharpness, and it's okay. Well, no, I, I, 
Let me let me also tell you, I, I forgot. I did touch this up on the Spyderco Sharp Maker, so this is the edge after. But before I touched up on the Sharp Maker, it it had a, a okay working edge. So like I said, I still have a lot of testing to do on it, so I can you know give y'all uh, a good review on how it holds up. So y'all just have to wait for the full review on that. Um, one thing that, that bothered me right off the back, as soon as I opened it and I went to close the knife, uh, being that this is a stainless liner lock and uh, you already have, you know, somewhat, not a thin liner lock, but, you know, just a normal size. And you don't really usually see um, lock bar reliefs on that and it has some strong tension. And you can see how they have that, that cut out right there to get your finger in there and you can definitely do it but it also thins it out right there so it's very uncomfortable with the strong lock bar pressure that it has so I find the easiest method is to I call it the claw method just stick your finger in there and close it like that much easier you can spidey flick it um, but that that's that's a pretty big complaint for me with my hands like the way they are um, there's no skeletonizing whatsoever in these in these stainless liners and you have this chunk of stainless right here with your D2 blade that's you know no lightweight so this knife is a, a chunky monkey we're gonna do a few size comparisons and I'm gonna show you know some of his direct competitors and this guy comes in at 5.55 ounces which you feel especially back heavy in this area the the um the back of this choils the balance point on this knife as you can see so you know I don't hold my knife like that I, I come forward you definitely feel that extra weight from the back spacer but like I said what is this knife competing it's competing in this this new market that we got of budget blades with D2 steel that I'm loving and the Rat Model 1 this comes in around the same price you got more blade on the Rat 1 stainless construction and all the same and this being bigger and everything it's 5.37 ounces on the rat one another direct competitor is the se zancudo it's a good bit smaller and it's cheaper but uh and way lighter another competitor in the d2 market which i've been liking this blade i, I think i don't know if i posted my full review Got this this idea, this knife from Jimmy Slash, or I found out from it through him. And that is the Timberline Simba in D2 steel. And one more for size reference. Cold Steel, American Lawman. All these good work knives. American Lawman's probably the closest in size. This is the All State version. So close to the same price as well. Um I, I first learned from Stat Gear by buying this little knife. I forgot. I don't know if I was on the, um, uh, what is it? Where you, I don't know. One of those things. I picked it up. Just a fun little keychain knife. I, I like the design. I love that, uh, that, what is it? What kind of sword is that? The samurai sword, I guess. And that's where I first learned from them. But another issue that I learned from this knife and I was hoping that it wouldn't be like that on this knife is I don't know what kind of thread locker compound they use let me take this little guy out on the pivot I don't know if they use JB Weld on the pivot I've never had an issue with any any other pivots besides these two after using a hair dryer and if the hair dryer didn't work I used my um, soldering iron and I did a double combo after I couldn't get it with the hair dryer. I put the hair dryer on it and I put the soldering iron on it as I was heating it up. And I did it for a good long while and that that pivot would not budge. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they do. If you if you if you have this knife right here and you were able to get the pivot loose, let me know how you did it. But uh that's that's very, very ugly to me because this knife has bearings, and you will, at some point, want to be able to clean this knife out. And there was some gunk in there. I had to do some, you know, maintenance without taking it apart. But I can't stand not being able to take my knife apart and, and service it myself. Now, the, the crappy thing is, is these two, these two right here, 
uh, didn't have, if they had any thread locker, it's not permanent for sure because I can easily adjust these. But this one, no go. I don't know if I stripped it out yet, but uh, darn close. I thought about making it a slot, but I don't want to mess it up because I may give this one away in a future giveaway or something if it's a sound and uh, sturdy knife. So that's my first impressions on the Stack Gear Aussies. Uh, not a terrible knife, but I would definitely hold off on purchasing it, uh, especially, like I said, with all the great options you have these days. Um, that, you know, I've tested that one thoroughly. I've tested this one thoroughly, tested this guy thoroughly. And, you know, they all, their, their steels all are a little bit different, but they hold up well. And, you know, I, I can speak for these. Now this one, after some testing, if it, you know, I'm going to put a new edge on it. It may have had a burr on it and it might've knocked the burr off and caused it to go dull. I don't know. But after I put a new edge on it, put it through some testing, carry it for a few weeks, then I'll give you all my final, my final therapy session and we'll see what my final thoughts are. So I hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, share it with all your friends in your social networks. And if you're not subscribed yet, what are you waiting on? Hit that subscribe button right now. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Next milestone I get to, we're going to have another cool giveaway. So if you don't want to miss any of the giveaways or any of the content on the channel, hit that subscribe button. Also hit that that bell button by the subscribe button so you won't miss any of my videos. Hope everybody's doing great. Have a good one. Peace.